Friends, welcome to the Christmas podcast at Wild at Heart. John and Stacy with you this week. Merry Christmas. To bring you Christmas joy and blessings, greetings from your friends here at Wild at Heart. It's the fourth week of Advent, and Saturday is Christmas, which makes Friday Christmas Eve. Oh, my goodness. Which makes Thursday... (laughs) Christmas Eve Eve. Christmas Eve Eve. (laughs) 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 And that's it, folks. We really hope this has been meaningful to you as it has been to us. (laughs) So much that we would love to share with you and bring to you this week so much on our hearts for your hearts, but mostly just love and blessings to you this week. And wherever you are, whenever you're picking this podcast up, may Christ be the strength of your heart here in the Christmas week. Stacy, where where has your heart been going here during Advent? Oh, that's such that's such a good question. Um, but first, I just love the honor of getting to do this podcast and to come alongside you who are listening wherever you're at. I'm just imagining each person and and love to get to come alongside and share this particular podcast on this particular week. So, For me, this Advent has been really unique. It's been very different. Really? In what way? Well, for one thing, we've been doing the Lectio practice, Lectio 365 Advent thing, which has been marvelous. But in my own heart, Christmas is usually a time, well, every time that I'm living memory, where I I have such longing I have such an ache for transcendence. Yes. And and I love Christmas. I love Christmas lights. I love seeing people's houses decorated. I love our tree. But it also evokes this feeling in me to want to go back to when it wasn't up to me to pull off. Yes. But also where kind of in my imagination... I I picture an increase in the wonder and the magicalness of it where it's just like a holy day, a set-apart day, or even two days, Christmas Eve and Christmas, till about 2 o'clock in the afternoon when I'm tired. But just the nostalgia, the wanting to go back, the wanting to be a child, really. And what is happening for me this year is twofold. One is just recognizing that. And blessing those desires. Yeah, I want that. And yeah, I love the wonder and the beauty and and looking at this stuff through the child's eyes. But I have less desire to go back to being one myself, to the reality of what my childhood was actually like. Yes. Like in my memory, I have romanticized it. So I want to be and am more present to this Christmas as an adult. I'm enjoying it, the joy of it, the beauty of it, but also the looking forward to what it means. Like, yay, Jesus came and yahoo, let there be sparklers and twinkle lights and parties and celebrations and songs and hallelujahs. But it's a precursor. It's not the end of the story. Yeah. So I think more than ever before, this Christmas, it is evoking my longing for his ultimate return. Yes. Yeah. I think many people can relate to the nostalgia and the longing, at least for what we wished had been. Yeah. Or there's something in our hearts that's very transcendent, that's connected to Christmas or that Christmas can evoke. Yeah, I think we know what it is or was supposed to be like. Yeah. And some part of us knows. And and for years, you have gone to that place every Christmas. And I think it's been disappointing for you not to recover it, not to be able to recreate it. Right. I love what we've done. 
I love our traditions, but it always falls a little short. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And yet this year, there's something new. And I'm wondering, do you think it's connected to our age? <laughs> I hope so. I hope it's connected to some maturity, but I think it's actually connected to some healing. Oh. It's some healing that God has done. Absolutely. It's not just a, a healing and a release. It's a healing of honoring my story and in that not requiring it to be something other than it was or or right now to provide something that I didn't have. Yeah. I don't know, actually. Yeah. yeah. I think it's connected to your healing. I think it's connected to you and I maturing, mm -hmm. just simply getting older. Yeah. And I think it's connected to the hour. Ooh, to the hour. Because the hour is maturing. Yes. Right? Yeah. Yeah. There's a ripening. Because of all Christmases, last year and this year, you know, when the world has been shaken like a snow globe. <laughs> yes. The world has been shaken and continues to be mm -hmm. shaken. And for the human heart, that elicits this longing and this need. It's a very good need to set things right. Let's make things right. Yes. And good. Yes. And then you connect that to Christmas and oh my goodness, we want things to be beautiful and lovely and meaningful and rich conversations and holy services and yeah, liturgy yeah. and right, all of it, like that longing even more this year. Even more this year. Because it's hard on the human heart to have your world shaken, the world, I mean, our shared world. In a huge way. It really a is. huge way. And just to name that, everybody, that that has been really hard. And there is a yearning for some moments of rightness, settledness. Yes. Let all that snow in the snow globe settle back down to the bottom. Let there be clarity and beauty. Let it just, can we just settle down the chaos for a minute? Right, right. And the longing to recover, quote, normal. Right, to recover what feels like it's been stolen. Yeah. A lot of thievery. Right. So for you to be naming that even in the midst of that, your heart's not going backwards this year is really pretty amazing. It's really different. It's really going towards promises. To the promises that were fulfilled in Jesus' coming. Yes. And the promises that we are holding on to now. Yes. Yeah. What about you? What about you, John? Well, Where's gang, your heart been going? Gang, we, Stacey and I literally actually haven't had this conversation. We've had a lot of conversations around the holidays, and we have been very observant of Advent this year. Mm -hmm. We felt like we needed it. We felt yeah, it's been good. For the same reason everyone else in the world is looking for groundedness and goodness and it's normal or even better than normal, yes. right? Goodness. Yes. We have observed Advent through the four weeks this year more than normal. And the app that Stacy mentioned, Lectio 365, put out by the 24-7 prayer movement folks out of England, it is a beautiful free app. You can still dive into it this week. There's a morning and an evening reflection. So just want to give a shout out to those guys. Yeah, well so done. Good. What a nice gift to the mm -hmm. world. So we've had a number of conversations around the holidays and expectations and that sort of thing, but we haven't had this conversation. And so what's fascinating is my heart is in a new place this year as well. I love Bethlehem. I've always loved. I'm a sucker for nativity scene. Oh, it's your favorite song. Or it has been, yeah. A Little Town of Bethlehem. A Little Town of Bethlehem. Yeah, how silently, how silently mm. the wondrous gift is given. So God imparts to human hearts the blessings of his heaven. I love Bethlehem. And, and in most years, I would look back. Christmas is a time of celebrating Bethlehem. Yes, yes. But this year has been different for me. And I want to relate it to an experience that I think many of our listeners have had or can relate to. There are seasons in our lives where God says, okay, we're doing something new now, uh -huh. and I don't want you looking back. 
and he might move you out of a church that you've been in for years and has been special for you, or maybe it was the church of your childhood, even the faith of your childhood, and he might be moving you on. I want to grow you. We're, we're doing something new now. He does it in relationships, and it, it can really throw people that relationships that were very meaningful, a small group, a friend, things change. Yes. And it's because we're moving on. Mm-hmm. And, and it's not that something soured, although God will sometimes do that to get us to move on. Right, but that's not the only reason. Yeah, it's not the only reason. It doesn't have to happen. What I'm describing is there are seasons in our lives where God says, no more looking back. I want you to look forward. Now we're moving into a forward thing. And so that has happened to me this Christmas where I haven't thought about Bethlehem hardly at all wow. this year. And I've almost thought, I'm like, is something wrong with me? Am I, I don't have the Christmas spirit. And, and I've been very observant of Advent, morning and evening and prayer and reflection and worship. But I know what he's doing. I know what he's doing. And what he's doing, he wants my full gaze fixed on the next Advent. And it requires some choices to let go of some of the insistence on, no, I want it to be just like the good old days. So have you, have you felt those? Have you had to make those? Yeah, I have. I have. They're internal. Uh huh. They're in the heart. And I had shared in an earlier podcast here in the Advent series about trying to make everything really beautiful and right this Christmas. And, you know, the lights we ordered were, you know, stuck on a cargo ship somewhere. And, you know, all of the efforts, even last night, I was out in the front yard trying to fix the lights <laughs> in a tree that we had decorated out in the front yard, but they had gotten tangled in the tree. Such a picture. And it was, it was hopeless. There was no way that I could, without ripping it all apart, and I could just feel Jesus saying, let it go, pal. Mm. Let it go. I know, I know the snow globe. I know the shaken. I understand that you are longing uh. for things to be really good and right, and you're reaching backwards for that. You want to recreate what you've known in the past, or at least what you hope for. Uh-huh. And, but I'm asking for your full attention on the horizon. Mm. And so I didn't know all that was going on for you this Advent, and you didn't know all that was going on yeah, for me. Yeah, I this. love it. I love that he's doing such similar things. Yeah. And Al, I was responding to an earlier podcast when we were talking about mistakes we make around the holidays, and he was talking about the ache and the longing and how so often things don't quite match that. And he sent me this quote from C.S. Lewis that I just think is so helpful right now. Lewis wrote this, the settled happiness and security which we all desire, God withholds from us by the very nature of the world. But joy, pleasure, merriment, he has scattered broadcast. We are never fully safe, but we have plenty of fun and some ecstasy. It's not hard to see why. The security we crave would teach us to rest our hearts in this world and therefore become an obstacle to our return to God. A few moments of happy love, a landscape, a symphony, a merry meeting with our friends, a bath, or a football match have no such tendency. Our Father refreshes us on the journey with some pleasant ends, but will not encourage us to mistake them for home. Oh my goodness. And honey, I think about the healing that he's been doing in your heart regarding your past mm -hmm. and some of the romanticizing that you were doing over your childhood. Yes. And as healing has come to that, you haven't needed to go find home back there. Oh, oh, it's so huge because a couple months ago, I wanted to drive the eight hours to go. That's right. Right? Yes. I, I, I mean, it, ugh, to your childhood home. To my home. childhood home. And I, and I found the hotel that I would stay in. And all I wanted to do was just 
walk around the block, just see it, you know, not be that weird person. Why are they parked in front of my house? So I'd have to be, you know, surreptitious, but really to go what I was considering home. My heart was longing for it, aching for it. And it took a little while for me to really go, what is it you're longing for? Because the little girl is not there and your neighbors aren't there and your father is not there. Christmas of years gone by is not The door not decorated there. like a package is not there. But before that got assuaged, Jesus needed to come and speak to me. And he did in just like overwhelming ways to say, your home is in the heart of your father. Your heavenly father, he is my home. And there are words that I've actually known in my head, but there was this sinking in yeah. of that revelation that I don't have to drive eight hours to go home. I, I carry my home with me. He indwells within me. He is my home. And that has really shifted things. Mm. Emmanuel. God with us. Home with oh, us. Home with us. Wow. Right? So, gang, here's what we wanted to bring to you this week, is that as we mature, as we become grown-ups, we have a very important role to play in the shepherding of our own hearts. Now, yes, Christ is our shepherd. Uh, scripture calls him the shepherd and guardian of your soul. But maturity means shepherding your own heart as well. Yes. And it's paying attention to all that this week is bringing up, both the good and the difficult, and getting that into Christ and getting Christ into that. It's uh, not ignoring it, uh -huh. but it's not letting it rule you either, right? You don't have to drive those eight hours to try and recover some nostalgic moment. Right, right. Okay, so we're just describing and what Lewis was trying to talk about, that settled happiness. And I, I didn't even think of the snow globe analogy when I chose that quote. The world has been shaken, and we are all looking for a settledness of goodness mm -hmm. and even wonder and joy. And people have been trying to find it in vacations and new jobs. And I don't know if I've told the story on this podcast. A friend of mine goes to a coffee shop next to a Lamborghini dealership. Okay, Lamborghinis are $300,000, okay. you know, phenomenal European cars, uh -huh. luxury cars. Very, very elite, very expensive. And he would go in the showroom just to look at the cool cars. You know, every boy loves looking at cool like matchbox <laughs> cars. And he went in and it was empty. And he was so sad. And the salesman comes out and he says, gosh, I'm so sorry that you guys are closing. Was this like all of the shortages and the shipping? And the salesman laughs and looks at me and says, I can't keep a car in here. They're going like hot cakes. Oh my goodness. Okay. So there it is. People are buying $300,000 cars to try and feel better. Okay, so Lewis talks about the settled happiness and security, which we all desire, is actually withheld by the very nature of the world that God created. You know, Christmas is just a day. Right. And then suddenly it's the day after, and then it's the day after. Like, we are all moving yeah. towards the real Christmas. Yeah. We're all moving towards the culmination of what these longings are about. So here's one of the things I've been thinking about or coming to realize is that Christmas and all that we do, the carols, the hymns, Bethlehem, the star, the wise men, all that, Christmas is actually not primarily about Christmas. In the same way that a wedding is not primarily about the wedding, right? but right. about the new life right. and marriage that it's just been created. <laughs> yes. And all that's going to happen because of that. Right. A whole kingdom is going to emerge uh -huh. because of that. Christmas is not primarily about Christmas in the same way that a birth mm, right? is not primarily about a birth. Mm -hmm. Yes, the birth is like joyful. And when it's the birth of the Son of God, it's breathtaking, mm -hmm. almost speechless. Oh, yes. But just as in every other birth, it's about the rest of the life that just got started. Yeah. 
the unending life right. that just got started. And so as we were praying about this, Stace and I were sitting in our living room last night by our Christmas tree, praying over this podcast and just asking Jesus, what do you have for us? What, what do our friends need to hear this week? And he said that every longing and desire is about to come true. Christmas opened the door back into the kingdom of God. Yes. Christmas opened the wardrobe door <laughs> back into Narnia. Mm. And here's the touching moment. So, you know, we have ornaments on our tree and most of the ornaments are symbolic. You know, they're goofy, precious, funky little ornaments the kids created when they were in... Which I adore. You know, preschool. Yes. And we still have those. Those are on the tree. And then there's ornaments from vacations and holidays, mm -hmm. canoe trips. You know, the, there's a canoe on there yeah. and things yeah. like that. There is an ornament on the tree that's yours. Mm -hmm. And it is Cinderella and the prince at the ball. Yes. And it captures so much of what captivating was and right. all that God was doing in your heart right. at yes, that time, yes. right? Okay. So the, I need to describe the ornament. It's very, very charming, but below the ornament, hanging down from it by a silver thread is just the glass slipper. Okay. So it's, it's lovely. It's fairy tale, right? So we are praying last night about this podcast. And Jesus, what are you saying to all of us this Christmas? And he says that your every hope and desire is about to come true. And I look down and all I see, the way the room was lit, all I see is the glass slipper. <laughs> <laughs> and I love God for that. I love how he does that. Those little exclamation yes. points, those little things where he says, yes, I just said that to you. <laughs> Uh, I just said that to everyone listening to this. Everything you long for is about to come true. And I had referred in the Advent series earlier to a, a beautiful letter that George MacDonald had written. And I, I had mistaken one letter for another. I said it was to his daughter, but it was actually to his wife. And his career was very, very disappointing. His books did not sell. He was not a successful author in his hour. And his ministry was not very successful. He was not championed. He was hated mm. because he was so challenging the religious mm -hmm. spirit of his hour. And especially the idea of talking about the heart, right. that the heart is central. He just upset so many people. So he had gone on a trip that he hoped might open up his career, and it did not. And he is writing a letter back to his wife. And at the close of the letter, he says this, we may, however, say to ourselves, one day these souls of ours will blossom into the full sunshine when all that is desirable in the commonness of daily love and all we long for of wonder and mystery and the look of Christmas time will be joined in one. And we shall walk as in a wondrous dream, yet with more sense of reality than most of our waking joy now gives us. <laughs> That is so exquisitely beautiful. And there we are. The true hope is what is coming. It is. And in your healing and your ability to let go of some nostalgia and look forward and what he's been doing in my heart of, it's not Bethlehem this year, pal. Look at the horizon. Watch for the second advent. It's because of that. It's the, that. all that longing in us for wonder and joy and settled happiness, secure, lasting happiness is about to come true. <laughs> oh my goodness. Tears just come to my eyes in that. And I, you know, I just encourage people to rewind that and just listen to that passage one more time 
because it's stunning. It's it's human. Yes. It's the the beauty of the earth and all that we enjoy. And but what is coming is higher and better and this oh, this connection of all of it. And what I also love John is that he wrote that he knew that from a place of disappointment. Yes. So his hope, like our hope, is in what's coming. Yeah. What is promised yes. to us. Yes. So I think if we could leave a couple things with you all, friends. First, we bless the child within us. Yes. All those longings. Yeah, we bless those. For nostalgia and wonder and joy, all those longings that maybe this year yeah. we'll have those really meaningful conversations. Yeah, all that desire. Yes, bless it. We bless that yeah. in us. Don't we, try to bury it. Or even take revenge on it mm. because it sets you up for heartache, Uh huh. right? Lewis talks about taking revenge on our longings by killing them. But no, 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 we bless them. We bless the heartache even. Right, we let bless... it tell the truth yeah. about it speaking to what we are made for. Yeah, and there may be young places in us that just need comfort Yeah, this holiday season and this Christmas time and just say, oh, little me, I bless you. <laughs> I do. I bless the child within who is still longing for the erector set, the racetrack, the, right? Oh, yeah. One year I actually bought myself the cutest stuffed animal because I always wanted stuffed animals and I never got one. So I bought myself one and... That's precious. Yeah. I'm like, here you go, darling. <laughs> there you go. Okay. <laughs> so we bless the child within while the adult in us lifts our gaze to the horizon, to the second advent, to the wonder and the joy and the, the Narnia, the re-enchanted world that Bethlehem opened the door to. Yes. And that will very, very soon be here. Mm. That's where we fix our heart, our hope, our gaze. And here's one of the delightful surprises of life. When you take the pressure off of things, it actually allows them to be great. It does. It does. It makes room for the joy. It might be wonderful this year. I hope it is. We pray it yeah. is. Yeah. And the little secret is to take all that pressure and expectation off of Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, Christmas night, you know, what, whatever all that means for you, the church service you're hoping that will happen, the family gathering that you wish, all that. We're going to bless the child within. And we're going to, as adults, lift our eyes to the horizon. And then that allows a spaciousness in this week for Jesus to come in yeah. the ways that he's coming. Yeah. Can I just add that as the shepherd of our souls, partnering with us, that we ask for his help to do that. Yes. Help help us, God. Lift our eyes. Mm. Yeah. Help me let go of the demands. Mm. and The um, fears. The fears so that I can be open-handed to receive what it is that you are giving. Yeah. Yeah. And so, friends, we would love to bless you here in this Christmas podcast, here in the fourth week of Advent, and as we come towards Christmas Eve and Christmas this weekend, we bless you with hope. We bless you with joy. We bless you with a surprising lift of your heart. We bless you with a deepening knowing that all of the promises are going to come true. It's all coming true. The glass slipper is coming true. <laughs> I love that. We love you all and Merry Christmas. Merry not, Christmas. Not just from Stace and I, but from yes. all of your friends here. If we get the team up here in the studio, they would all wish you a very Merry Christmas. Thanks for being our comrades and friends in this journey towards the second advent.